going to start a larger project with the bike. Um, pretty sure it has a blown, uh, slightly blown head gasket. Uh, finished up a track day. Ran great at the track day. Um, it was hot at the track day, 90 degrees over at Fontana. No problems there. Definitely was super hot. The fan came on multiple times during the sessions. But um, got back from uh, the track day, let the bike sit for a couple days, started the bike up. Uh, a bunch of white smoke coming from the tailpipe. Uh, popped the tank, changed, pulled up the airbox, put some plugs in. Uh, some new plugs because I was hoping it was just like a plug or something like that. So it's got new plugs. It's still, uh, it ran a little better, but still blowing white smoke. So we're going to start a bigger project. Is that my earbuds in? So the bigger project's going to be um, pulling the motor, <laughs> taking the head off, uh, to see what's kind of going on with it. So uh, this series of videos is going to kind of go over uh, what it takes to pull the motor out of one of these things, remove the head, and hopefully get the whole thing working again. So the first thing we got to do is take the bike apart. So we'll get started with that. All right, to start things off, I actually removed uh, the battery. It's just two 10 millimeter bolts uh, required to uh, pull the battery. So pulled that thing out as a starting point. And we'll drain the oil. 13 mil. Oh, got it. So obviously we're going to have to not only uh, drain the radiator, but remove it as well. So what we're looking at is the right side of the radiator and we're going to have to remove uh, some brackets, one behind the header, uh, one down here, and then uh, one, uh, one right here and then one on the opposite side and those are 8 millimeter. So, and um, this is the left side of the radiator where the fill cap is, and the, the last screw that I'll have to remove is right here, and again, that's, a, that's an 8mm. Again, we're, we're here on the left-hand side of the bike, and so you're also going to, this is the main wiring harness, you'll have to disconnect this little um, connector right here that goes right here, and uh, that's the, the power lead that goes to the radiator fan. And then it was this thing right here that had to be removed. You just squeeze the tip of it and then pull it through the other side. Yep, there she is. Removed, still in good shape. Uh, I'm going to actually put some tape on these things and mark uh, where they go so that the, I, have, I don't have any problem uh, reconnecting the wiring harness later. Uh, let's see here. Radiator. Looks like it's in really good shape, so... That's good. One less thing to have to replace. The radiator removal was actually super easy, so I don't anticipate anybody running into an issue with that. I uh, zip-tied all the clamps together, put this in a bag so I can keep track of it. Got my hoses. They're in great shape. I'm just going to clean those up. I've got the radiator, and I'm going to store everything. And then uh, the next thing we need to do is remove the exhaust. So there's the stock header slash exhaust manifold. And uh, what you're going to want to do before you get like too deep into the project is to yeah, hit it with um, some type of uh, lubricant uh, at, at a time to uh, help um, so that uh, we don't break any of those um, nuts off when we take it off. And then there's going to be also some clamps near the back, which I'll film in a second. All right, so you'll see this cable right here. Uh, this has to be disconnected. It goes to the O2 sensor uh, down there. Uh, make sure to hit that with some of this as well. That'll help when I have to 
remove that thing a little bit later. I don't even know if I have, uh, oh wait, haha, <laughs> I might be able to just leave that thing in. <laughs> anyway, let's go to this bolt and then this bolt and so a little bit of PB Blaster, your lubricant there and there. And I think I could just leave this guy in there. Uh, you may have to remove the zip tie, which is right there. Uh, but we'll give that a go and see see if we can get this thing off. 10, 10 mil right here. Luckily, I had wrapped my exhaust before, so I knew that this one was ready to rock. Ready to come off fairly easily. Alright, I'm going to leave it uh, there to support the exhaust for a minute before I uh, pull the header down. Alright, pro tip here. So, you're going to notice that when I do most of the work, whenever possible, and I'm using a ratchet, I actually use these impact uh, drives. Um, there, you can tell because they're typically black. I don't like to use those slick, crumbed out sockets that have loose clearances and want to strip, you know, round off your nuts, um, use these. They're great. They're tight. Um, they're not as slick, and they have less deflection because the width is so, so much greater than those chrome sockets. So whenever possible, try and use those, especially as we move on to those header bolts. Okay, so the light on this part of the video is going to absolutely suck. Um, Sorry, I'm not going to move the bike <laughs> to get better lighting. Uh, once you uh, hit these guys with the lubricant, they are actually extremely easy to get off. So, what I'm now using, 12 mil. And so, I already loosened them all a bit. And now I'm just going to start pulling them off one by one. And hopefully this, um, this header comes off without a fuss. In order to get the uh, header off, looks like I'm going to have to pull off the whole exhaust. Um, maybe I could do it without it, but I don't want to mess up anything. So anyways, that's going to be pretty easy. i got to remove here, here, I've done this before, here, and here uh, to start, and then I'll walk you through the rest. So you will need to disconnect like the blinker, uh, the blinker lights and the brake lights, and there's just these two connectors. They have like a little... Uh, a little edge right here that you push down and they pull out and uh, they're actually keyed so that's a three prong and that's a four prong so you don't have to worry about marking them because you couldn't plug them in incorrectly anyway so that's that next there's two more bolts that we'll have to take out this is one of them uh, right here it's like a 12 or something uh, to pull this one off and then here, there's like a little tricky one. It's up in here, this guy right here, and that's um, a really large uh, Allen. They're 14s. There's also an 8mm behind the license plate. I know it's not the best angle. Whoops. There's a it's a eight millimeter Allen that's right here. Alright, so with enough finagling, you shake it all loose and uh, the ding thing comes out. Anyway, you'll get it. There it is. Uh, you may, so nice we didn't have to remove the uh, old O2 sensor. Uh, so in the past, I had already removed the exhaust valve and then have uh, flashed my ECU to remove that feature. So that's already been done. Yeah, so um, that was a little bit harder than the radiator. But um, it's definitely doable if you basically loosen up or remove the whole back half of the exhaust. The studs that held 
the, the header onto the head were actually extremely easy to remove uh, when you spray the lubricant on there, so I wouldn't really worry about that too much. Uh, but uh, just remember, I use an impact, impact socket if you have it.